So I just start, uh, started recording. I think you can see the screen. If not, please tell me. And uh, well, we should continue to talk about uh, solid rocket motors. So of course, solid rocket motors are a common way of uh, realizing our rocket. That means that we are storing our propellant solid phase and we uh, trying to convert the power uh, hidden inside the molecules making up this solid material. In we, we are going to transform this directly in a gas in a, in a, our combustion products that will evolve in our nozzles. So we uh, introduced. And, and so we know that we have this kind of devices going from very low level of trust, a few newtons up to meganewtons, and the biggest uh, rocket uh, si single motor realized to, so far is of course a solid rocket one, and as I think should be something like uh, more than 10 meganewtons as the trust delivered by. This should be the, the, the new booster for the space drone systems from uh, United States, from NASA. So we have seen that one important property of our uh, the uh, burning rate, and we have found that uh, there is the St. Robert OVH law that allow us to uh, relate the, this burning rate to uh, have propellant properties identified through two and the combustion index. And of dependencies based on the value of this combustion index that can be, uh, we also say that should be in the range 0 0.2, 0 0.8. Uh, but we have also commented the, the, the possible case of an interesting solution, that of a proto uh, burning. That means n equal to zero. That was also asked from one of you as a possible solution, uh, if this is a practical solution. And the answer was and is that uh, we have we can try to uh, adapt our material to improve their properties in terms of A and N, but we have to consider that, of course, as all engineering systems, if you are working on some properties, you have to also consider the consequences on the other properties. So perhaps you can have some independent uh, uh, Independency on pressure, but overall you will see, or you can see, that it will cause the fact that it will be complicated to have high pressures with the kind of propellants. So there are pros and cons of having, uh, let's say, if in case we are able to to do that, because not always we can do uh, what we like. Depends on the property of, of the materials we have available. So we have this uh, center over law that tells us that the burning rate we, we always use this kind of rule for saying the dependency of burning rate on the, on the chamber pressure on the environment pressure. And we have also commented about the strain burner that allow us to make measures and to evaluate in specific environmental condition, which is the value of a burning rate of a given uh, propellant. And we can use this kind of strain burners to try to, to check the effect of uh, different uh, ingredients that we can use in our uh, material. Then we also mentioned the, the, the role of this uh, temperature coefficient and how we can affect at the end the, the 
if there is some effect of the environmental conditions on the burning rate, saying that, the, for instance, the, you mentioned the, the day temperature, if we are in a, in a place where we can go from very low temperature to high temperature, for instance, from night to, to today, or also from uh, one day to another, and we can start with a, a solid propellant with, in a diff, at a different temperature. And this may have an effect on the performance because we mentioned that the heat transfer from the hot gases to the uh, solid material plays a role. And so if you start from a high temperature, there will be less heat transfer needed to have a given reaction, to activate a given reaction, and the additional heat will cause a higher uh, regression uh, rate. So it will burn more easily if, we, if it starts from a higher temperature. And so it's important to take into account also how the, the, the solid propellant behaves with respect to, to its initial temperature. So it, it is expressed, the, the, this temperature coefficient, through a function that allow us to identify, for instance, reference values of the temperature. This is one possible expression. This is another one. Where these two temperatures, T prime here and T i zero here, a reference constant for that material. And we see, for instance, that here, if I close this T prime, uh, if I have a, a Ti which is close to P, T prime, it means that this term will go to infinity and you have a, a, an infinite burning rate. That means that is everything is burning together. That means that this is something that represents something like an auto-ignition, self-ignition, temperature. So again, these are experimental correlation and uh, a way of measuring this kind of uh, dependence or this kind of sensitivity of the burning rate to uh, initial temperature is to introduce a sensitivity parameter, which is our sigma p, or also we find also as pi r p. That means this p is related to the fact that we are evaluating the sensitivity at a given pressure. And this is defined as 1 over r b by its derivative with respect to initial temperature at a given pressure or equivalently you have d, dr over r, so this is the derivative of the logarithm of, of uh, the burning rate. dti at a given pressure. So you see that this is uh, a quantity which is expressed in Kelvin to minus one, and uh, typical values can be of 0 0.1, 0 0.2% per Kelvin. It means that we can have 2.55% if we consider a 25 Kelvin temperature difference, which is a wide range. So, of course, we can express, based on this kind of expressions, there is, of course, a relation between our sigma and uh, our A. And, uh, for instance, if we consider the first one, I have to make the derivative, derivative of the logarithm of RB. So, RB, APCN, sigma is the derivative of logarithm of this over Ti 
at the given pressure. So, of course, here this logarithm can be expressed in this way. And of course, there will be no change of this logarithm with the given pressure with initial temperature. And we also can uh, see that also N does not depend on temperature. So we have that this is equivalent to say that this is the derivative of logarithm of A with respect to Ti at a given pressure. <coughs> So if our A is equal to A0 e, uh, to tau, what was here? Ti minus Ti0. Uh, we can replace it here. And of course, again, A0 is constant. And so we have that ln A is ln A0 plus tau Ti minus Ti0. And uh, so this is again a constant. So we have just to derive the second term with respect to Ti. And so you see the derivative is tau. Mm. So clearly, this tau here is exactly our sensitivity to the temperature. So actually, writing this in this way, writing this A in this way, means that we are considering the sensitivity parameter here. Uh, similarly, if we consider now let me check here what I wrote, A prime. So this can be also expressed for the other relation. These are just two kind of relations that are written for uh, depending on the best fitting of experimental data. So here our LNA will be equal to gain ln a prime minus ln t prime minus ti. So we have to make the derivative of this term. And uh, it will be minus 1 over. Uh, so there is a minus here and a minus here. So the derivative of this term will be uh, minus 1 over t prime minus ti, and there is minus in front, so it would be uh, that sigma p in this case is 1 over t prime minus ti. So this is uh, the sensitivity, sensitivity, sensitivity to temperature that is also used to derive other parameters because we can, here we see the sensitivity of the burning ray to temperature, but we can also introduce other parameters that are relevant to the sensitivity, for instance, of the chamber pressure to the, the, the uh, initial temperature or to other pa performance parameters because we will see that there is uh, uh, a relation between this burning rate and the, the other performance parameters. So just to uh, recall again our starting point, why we are interested in the burning rate is because we have seen that we are, you recall that we talked about this, is our propellant, and we are uh, uh, burning this on this surface. We assume now, for the sake of simplicity, this kind of evolution. And so we understand that in a given time, 
we burn a given amount of material, and so we have a given mass per unit time that we are producing as gases. And this has been expressed as delta mv, this burning mass flow rate, which is proportional to the density of the propellant in solid phase, the exposed surface to uh, the environment, so the burning surface is AB and the burning rate. Uh, so, of course, we know that we have also, this is the, the, the amount of gases which are produced that will be related also to the amount of gases that will evolve within the nozzle. So, to our, we call this dot MT to refer to the trot area, and this will be, you see, a T over C star. And so you see that mass flow rate is related to pressure. Also, this mass flow rate is related to pressure. And so we can, we can discuss what is the role of these two mass flow rates and how they are connected to the resulting chamber pressure. And of course, the evolution in time, for instance, of chamber pressure of a solid rocket model will be directly related also to the evolution of thrust in time, because you recall that, of course, we have that thrust is related to chamber pressure and trot area. And to, to, uh, to the expansion ratio here through the thrust coefficient. So let's consider a reference case where we have that a given, where we have a given nozzle that is not changing in shape. So something which is has always the same area ratio. And we can imagine that we are, for instance, in vacuum. And you know that this, this case, if the property of gases do not change, you have at least in the ideal case, constant thrust coefficient. So we can imagine that this quantity is CF is roughly constant, is roughly not, de not dependent on the evolution in time of condition in chamber. And you can also say that if we have, we are interested in, in having improvement on thrust coefficient, we, we talked about it, about, about it, in terms of, uh, because we like to have high specific impulses which are directly related to this thrust coefficient. But we also know that we can change uh, in a quite, uh, let's say, more evident fashion our trust value by changing PC and AT rather than CF. We can imagine that we can improve the trust coefficient of some uh, 5%, 10%, depending on the shape of the nozzle. But we can, of course, consider twice the value of pressure, 10 values of pressure, or the same for the trot area. So the, the, the sensitivity to these two parameters is, of course, much more. And what we can expect in our example that I was mentioning before is that if we have here a more or less constant trust coefficient and more or less constant trot area, if we have some pressure behavior in time, as a constant, we have a similar trust behavior in time. So the evolution of pressure in time, if it changes, uh, will also tell us about the evolution of trust in time. And this is important in case of solid rocket motors, also because we were mentioning among the drawbacks of this family of rockets is the difficulty of having trotability, so to control and to change the trust level under command. But if we uh, do not consider, if you consider this is a possible drawback, 
you see that if we like to change the uh, trust value as a function of time, we should try to change the chamber pressure value as a function of time. It's the easier way to have a trust profile. This is called trust profile, the evolution of trust in time. So we can define, uh, let's say, uh, an area of uh, analysis of interest that is called internal ballistics. Which is a discipline addressing the uh, modeling and computation of uh, trust and chamber pressure evolution in time for a solid rocket model. And we'd like to see something related to the internal ballistic starting from the first level of analysis. And the first level of analysis is the performance prediction by a lampard parameter method. So uh, the, the first step is just to, to, to model what we were saying together. Before, it was that we have to compare this data MB and data MT that tell us about the mass evolving in the nozzle and the mass produced by the propellant. They have to be related to each other. And again, let's consider our reference model just to have an understanding and you can see that we have some solid propellant here, which is burning here, and we have uh, a given chamber pressure here, which is the total pressure of our nozzle. So at the first, yes, as, as a first step, we say that uh, we can compare directly the produced mass flow rate should be equal to that MT. And we can uh, in principle consider that, of course, we have the uh, rho P, A, B, A, P, C, and equal to P, C, A, T over C star. And you can solve for PC, for instance, from here. Uh, before doing this, I just uh, like to, to warn about uh, something that we are neglecting here in this steady state condition. It's actually it's steady state, but it's something which is changing in time because we have this regressing surface. That means that also the volume of the chamber is changing. And in fact, if you consider here two different instances of time, you can see here initial time here, and uh, after a given amount of time delta t, you reach this position because you are regressing in this direction. And so you have increased the, the volume of the chamber of this amount. So we should uh, evaluate this, we should keep this into account and say that in this time delta t, what, what happened? We have consumed a given amount of uh, propellant, so it means that we have some amount, some mass, which is delta Mb, and this mass uh, in part has been used to fill this volume, and in part, of course, 
will be uh, given for uh, the, the in part has been also expelled from the chamber. So better. We say that this is the, the let's say that this is the chamber volume and we have that something is coming from so delta t dot mb and something is going out delta t dot mt this is something coming in and coming out from this volume but this volume has changed so we should consider that also this additional volume that is available and this will be occupied by a given mass let's say which is the increased mass of gases within the chamber so in the unit time we have introduced in the volume this mass you have expelled from the volume this mass and you have increased the volume and so it will be occupied by this mass this is a mass balance that we have in this uh, changing volume chamber and what is this delta mc is of course the density that we imagine as a constant property that we have within this chamber area by the change of volume and this change of volume is the same that we have used to to consider the burn the burning of the solid material so it will be of course the the the, the area the exposed surface of the propellant a b by delta x and this delta x is the exactly the same length that we have considered for the burning rate and so it's the burning rate by the the uh, time that has been considered so if we consider that this is as i mentioned dot mb delta t dot mt delta t and rho c a b r b delta t we can simplify our delta t and obtain this relation and we recall now that our dot mb is rho p a b r b and here we can see why in fact we can uh, neglecting this term is not a big error because we assume that until we, oh, sorry, uh, provide that we assume that the, the gas density is negligible with respect to solid density. So we have something like uh, uh, between 1,000 and 2,000 kilogram per cubic meter as a typical value of the solid density, uh, whereas we have something of the order of few kilograms per cubic meter in the gaseous phase. So we can assume that our rho C is sufficiently less of the 
propellant density. And so in this case, we can actually take the equality dot mb equal to dot mt. So we can go back to our balance written by this relation, and we have uh, we can solve for the chamber pressure and get the what we can call the as the equilibrium chamber pressure the, that of course is given by the balance between the two mass flow rates and. Uh, in this case, we have that rho P, A, B, A, P, C, N is equal to P, C, A, T over C star. And so we have that P, C, 1 minus N, solving for P, C and bringing the term P, C on the right-hand side. I have here rho P, a C star and then this area ratio A B over A T. From here we obtain our expression for P C is rho P A C star, let's say this kappa. And, and this is to the power 1 over 1 minus n. So we see that the, the pressure which is established will depend on the propellant density, on the propellant temperature coefficient, on the characteristic velocity, So, and you see that these are all properties of the propellant itself. So a propellant is a given density, as a given property in terms of A and also of N that appears in that expression. And you have also that C star, which is the, the combustion, uh, let's say this property of the combustion of propellant. So you recall that this is a, one of the parameters that represents the content of energy that we can have available. So you see here, that the only control parameter in this expression is this area ratio here that is called with this k because this is short for this name that has been given to this ratio a b over a t which is the Clement. so this is an important uh, design parameter for our solid rocket model we can influence the value of pressure that we can achieve on the basis of this quantity on the Clement. And you can design for a given uh, burning surface, we can design a more or less high pressure based on the trot diameter and vice versa for a given trot diameter, you can, you can obtain a more or less high chamber pressure based on the Clermont parameter of having more or less large Clermont parameter means more or less high burning surface. <clears throat> so if we consider in our range of combustion index is N in a range between zero and one, you see that we have an exponent here, which is uh, uh, which is of course if it's zero, we have one. If we have one, it's infinity. That means that there is strong dependence of P C on K, right? And we have a strong dependence of the chamber pressure on the Clement because it could be, for instance, if n is one half, it means square. If, in, if it's one third, it means 1.5. If it's uh, 0.2, it will be 
uh, 1.25 is 0.8 would be 5. And so you see that the higher the combustion index, the more will be, more evident will be the dependency of the C on K. So the chamber pressure will depend on the Clement more uh, strongly if we consider propellants with combustion index larger, closer to one. Whereas the minimum dependence in the range 0, 1 will be for the proto burning where we have a linear dependence of the chamber pressure on the clemon. So the strong dependence means that uh, small variations of the clemon can uh, lead to high variations of pressure. So if we are too sensitive, we understand that this can be also uh, dangerous. That was an example to to understand better this kind of dependence. We consider, for instance, first the case with uh, n equal to zero. So for the sake of simplicity, we have a linear dependence. And uh, we assume that we have Rp equal to 2.5 millimeters per second at a term the pressure of 69 bar. So our APC n, n equal to zero, means that this burning rate is constant. And so for if this burning rate is 2.5 millimeter per second at this pressure, it will be that we have this say A equal to 2.5 millimeters per second. So let's use our relation and consider uh, yes, I missed here the information, but of course you need it. So in this case, for n equal to zero, you have just a linear dependence on the Clemon, and we can put reference values here just to have an order of magnitude. Uh, and you see here that we have, for instance, so this A is 2.5, 10 to minus three. The C star will be order of magnitude 2000, and this also order of magnitude more or less um, between 1 and 2000. It will be 1.5. Let's say, I, okay, let's, let's take this value, it doesn't matter. Uh, so actually you have here uh, this 10 to minus three, 10 to three cancer. So we have five and so 7.5 becomes 7,500 multiplied by our uh, Clermont. And this is in uh, is for international system units are used here. So you have to consider here these are Pascal. And if you like to have uh, just one bar, that means, of course, 10 to 5 Pascal, you should consider here a value of k, which is 10 to 5 
ove seven thousand five hundred so if it were uh, Do we have a problem? Yes, here you see that this, this clamor should be, let's say, something more than 10, because, of course, 10 to the 5 divided 10,000 would be 10, so here will be uh, something more, I think this would be uh, 13, if I'm not wrong. And uh, so you see that just to have one bar, we need at least a burning surface which is 10 times the trot area. If you like to go towards higher chamber pressure, let's say 10 bar, you should have more than 100. So from this, we already understand that if you are going to design rocket with high chamber pressure, we don't expect a geometry as the one as shown before, this geometry of course, considering that this this surface should be one hundred or one thousand times this surface here, this cross sectional area means that you have very wide rocket. So, if you consider that we have th this kind of the, the, the trust area, it's related to the trust level. If you need a high trust level, the high chamber pressure will have a huge cross sectional diameter of your solid propellant to, to have this uh, kind of uh, performance. And so, we'll see that this is not the, 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 the best solution because it would require a cross sectional area too high for a rocket. Uh, a further comment, now you see this, this is a, a simple case for A because we consider the, the uh, zero combustion index, this plateau propellant, uh, but in general this is not the case as I mentioned, so we, we, sh we are in the range point 2.8. So we should comment about the value of A. Uh, so I write again this. So the, the, the fact is that you have chamber pressure to a power and here we have, so this will be in the national, international system of unit will be Pascal and this will be meter per second. But perhaps usually you take your measure and you consider pressure in bar, if you're like. Uh, this is, let's say, something that is, uh, can be found also in uh, different units of measure, in imperial units of measure that, of course, are more complicated to translate, and you have to be careful because here we have also this power. So, and this because this could be, for instance, millimeter per second. So A can be found in unit of measure like uh, millimeter per second uh, per Pascal minus n, or, for instance, it could be.
that these are let's say millimeter per second megapascal minus 10 and of course converting the unit of measure is not uh, it's easy, but you have to be careful to do it correctly. So we will uh, stop uh, a few minutes and I'll show you an example of conversion from the, the typical value that we have for this uh, temperature coefficient. And uh, of course, we, that because we have to convert it to use it properly in the expression for the chamber pressure. So I stop a few minutes and we will uh, resume at uh, five times.
So we can <coughs> restart and uh, we have, let's consider an example where we have our A equal to 0.4 centimeter per second per megapascal minus N. And we also have n equal to 0.33 and rho p equal to 1800 kilogram cubic meter and c star equal to 1500 meter per second. So you have that rho p and c star are all hot equal to a given in an international system unit and also A can be uh, changed, but it's not international system unit because we have megapascal, we are not Pascal directly. So if we can evaluate our A, this would be 0 0.004 meter and divided by 100 per second MPA power n and this quantity is 10 to 6 pascal so it becomes 0 0.004 1 2 over 10 to 6 n meter second pascal so at this point we have this value in the international system and we can evaluate pressure in Pascal from the expression we have seen. And uh, here we can use the value uh, I listed here and the corresponding value of A uh, yes of course here if I consider this is 
let's consider one third, so that becomes six divided three here, and so it becomes that this is point A equal point zero zero four. And here I have multiplied by ten to minus uh, two, right? If I made no errors. So I can replace here, and I have uh, so rho is one point eight. 10 to 3, A is 4, 10 to minus 5, and uh, C star is 1.5, 10 to 3. And then I have the Clermont, and here is 1 over 1 minus 1 third, which is 2 third, uh, the inverse is three halves, that means 1.5 as the exponent. Uh, so here, just uh, 336 minus 5 is 1, so we have 4 by 1.5 is 6, so we have 6 by 1.8. That means 10.8. So it should be these. And uh, this equal to PC. So for instance, if you like to have, in this case, uh, 10 bar, <clears throat> just checking my, my figures that uh, I have one doubt. Yes, I have here, I sh should write that here, I have 10 to 6. Pascal is about 100k to 1.5. That uh, it means, so this should be 10 to 6 to understand that we are talking about the, the pressure of 10 bar. This corresponds to pressure of 10 bar. And you have 10 to 6 should be equal to this term here. This is more or less 100. This is 108. Let's take 100 for sake of simplicity multiplied by the Clermont. So this becomes also, uh, we have to make 6 over 1.5, which is 4. And so you have that 10 to 4 is equal to 10 to second by the Clermont. And so we see that to get pressure equal to 10 bar, it follows that our Clermont should be about 100. Also in this case, the order of magnitude is as we've seen before. So this is just to highlight two things. One of is to be careful about the unit of measure of A when using it inside this expression. And another one is that, again, these are more realistic value of the former example. And we see the importance of having 
high values of this Clement parameter, or in other words, that the value of the burning surface must be much higher than the trot area. And this is a very important aspect of the design of solid rocket motors. And we use uh, typically a cylindric shape for our case. And to have a high area, you, instead of using one of the bases of the cylinder, we consider the inner part. We, we consider tubular cylind cylinder also with a hole inside. So that to provide a higher surface at the burning one. And a different kind of cylindrical grain are considered. And uh, you can imagine that we have also, depending on the shape, if you consider something like this, you will see this, we will repeat this uh, soon, but if we consider this, the exposed surface and it's progressing in this direction, it's always the same. But if you consider something like this, let's say, as our cylindrical grain, and if the burning surface is this one, progressing in this direction, so that at a given time, we start from this uh, hole inside the cylinder, and then you progress much in this direction, you see that the, the exposed area will be increasing. And if you increase the, this uh, area, you increase the Clement parameter, and you also increase the chamber pressure, and you also increase the resulting thrust. So in case you design your propellant grain in such a way that the burning surface is increasing, you are considering what is called a progressive grain. So we have a progressive grain. if a b increases in time we consider a regressive grain if if a b of course is decreasing in time during uh, its evolution. And we also consider a neutral grain that can be of interest if you'd like to have a more or less constant chamber pressure. So a neutral grain is a, a, a grain such that the surface the, the, the burning surface remains more or less constant in time. So you see from here that the grain geometry is uh, an important design parameter. And you see, of course, that here the surface will be, if you consider that we are not burning at basis, of the cylinder, the surface will be 2 pi r. This is the radius this time and the length. And of course, this radius is, is increasing in time because it's the radius here. And you have your surface that will increase with this distance from the axis for this kind of geometry. And similar, you have here that this kind of grain will be called as a a neutral grain, which is the end burning grain or cigarette grain that we'll talk about later in the grain classification. So having said this and understanding that we not always have the, the this neutral grain so that we have, can have progressive grain and progressive trust, also regressive trust. 
we can imagine that we have not this flat behavior of trust and moreover we should also consider that we have we can, can have different kind of uh, well i need a time to start in a constant evolution of um, constant evolution is not correct uh, steady state behavior of the the, the burning so typically you uh, we will define a trust curve or trust profile where we consider the different parts of the evolution of trust for a solid rocket motor. where we can identify several points here. A, B, C, D, E. And here these points A and D correspond to roughly, this is the 10% of the maximum pressure. This is the maximum pressure here. Of course, you have trust on the axis, but we can identify the direct relation between trust and pressure. And in this trust profile, we identify the first delay time between this, the origin, the, the first time OA. which is the time needed for the ignition. And uh, we reach, one, once we reach given uh, pressure level, we can consider that the uh, solid propellant grain is ignited. And then after that, we have a sudden rise of chamber pressure and so we have a complete ignition of the propellant. So we reach to uh, reach steady state conditions, the design condition, and saying not always the right words. So uh, what we have here is CSB is 75 percent. So. So once we have uh, reached this, this value, it can, we can have, this is something regressive behavior because we have a decrease from C to D. Uh, but overall, what we say is that from here, from A to D, when we have this sudden decrease of trust, this is the burning time we are interested in. Typically, we say that this is our burning time TB. After the ignition, the first ignition transient, and before we have a sudden decrease of trust. Because, of course, this will be less under, con under our control. So overall we have also, but you see that here, the integral of F over T, which is on the abscissa, is also the, the imports we are providing. And this part could be still large enough. So we call this time as the action time. because we are providing a significant impulse all along this time. Uh, so we neglect of 
or we consider minor the contribution from O to A and from A E to the total uh, to, to the end of burning. And this will be the tail of our burning that is something that will continue for also for a long time in general, but providing a little trust. So this is just something that is often considered at different times characterizing uh, solid rocket models with burning time, the action time, and uh, uh, the ignition delay. Just definitions and also to see here if I consider this kind of trust profile, I should consider Something like this for a regressive grain. Or something like this for a progressive grain. And of course, a flatter behavior for a neutral grain. So this is neutral. So you see that th this grain shape will have as consequence a corresponding trust profile. Scusi professore, riguardo al primo grafico, le, le percentuali che sono riportate si riferiscono alla pressione, ma è equivalente considerare la spinta per sì, definire sono, questi punti? Sono definite sulla pressione, ma è equivalente considerarle sulla spinta, per quello che abbiamo detto prima, che sostanzialmente ah, okay. c'è una proporzionalità diretta tra pressione e spinta. Grazie mille. Prego. So, the, the, when we talk about the initial temperature, we make reference also to the, to the heat exchange between the hot gases and the, the, the solid grain. Now that if we consider our cylindrical grain, two-word grains, so that we have, let's say, if we consider a, a, a meridional plane as a cross section, we have propellant like this, and then some way another, you can understand that there is some flow here. And uh, if there is flow compared to the case where we have only gas in this direction, uh, you see that here the heat exchange can be also enhanced by forced convection. Can you see it? Here we have some flow, and so we have also some forced convection. So we have an enhancement of heat exchange, that means also an enhancement of the, of the, the, the burning rate that occurs in this case of geometries. It may happen is what we call the uh, erosive combustion, erosive burning. So this, this uh, can give you uh, a higher, I mean, I mean there is a, dif a different uh, 
burning rate, a different position because of the different heat exchange that we can have. And this, of course, will be higher when we have uh, a higher mass flux because what uh, governs heat exchange is mass flux G or rho V, which is related also to the Reynolds number. And uh, so when this quantity is, uh, of, of course, here you have to consider the, the amount of mass flow rate that depends also on the diameter. So there can be, uh, it's not easy to evaluate, but in general, what we have to focus for sure is on this quantity, rho and v. And uh, so what we can imagine is that if this diameter increases with respect to the short area, we have a lower velocity. And so the higher velocity will occur when the diameter is closer to the trot diameter. And this means that we have a higher effect of uh, erosive burning in the initial phase for this kind of grain than in the final phase. Right, because we have smaller diameter, we have higher velocities, and we have smaller diameters. So you see that in presence of erosive burning, what would be, for instance, this kind of truss profile will become something like let's say now this, of course, can be exaggerated, but you see that we have an increase due to erosive burning in the first phase. So you see that here, this erosion is not a mechanical erosion, it's just to a word that is used to identify the increased heat exchange due to the convective effects. <clears throat> yes, there is another aspect that could be uh, evaluated on the effect that we have on the burning rate. So this uh, convective heat exchange is one additional effect on the burning rate that has been considered besides the what we have seen before, that is the chamber pressure and the initial temperature. We have also this erosive burning, and we should also consider possible role of forces acting on the uh, propellant. If you are considering, for instance, a spinning uh, rocket, we have centrifugal forces squeezing the, the, the propeller towards walls, and this would also increase the burning rate. And we can uh, see plots like this of the burning rate over its reference value. Uh, considering spinning uh, rates more or less high, and so we can consider this is the acceleration and the local acceleration due to uh, spin. And what we can have for different propellants, I'm just showing uh, qualitative behaviors. And uh, this is propellant A, B, and C. Different propellants can be activated, at, can be sensitive to this acceleration at different values of uh, the acceleration itself. This is this A over G0, 50, 100, 150, and the increase that we can have would be as high as 2.5. So this is, however, this kind of spinning is mainly of interest for uh, military ap ap uh, applications for the for missiles. <clears throat> so 
the final part of uh, today's class is related to the uh, discussion of the stability of the equilibrium of the equilibrium pressure that we have uh, discussed before. So let's consider this. I go ahead. The steady stability of operation, and this will justify the fact that we say that the combustion index should be less than one. So let's uh, consider what we have uh, seen before, PC equal to A rho P C star K 1 over 1 minus n, and also the dot m b is equal to rho a uh, lowercase a, pcm, and dot m t equal to AT or C star by PC, just to highlight dependence on the chamber pressure. So let's consider now uh, that while before we have seen the, the, the balance of masses from a steady state point of view, so we consider that everything is uh, going to steady state, and we consider the amount of mass released, the, the the amount of mass that is exhausted by the chamber and increase of volume of the chamber. Let's consider now that this is a, in a, an expression of the change in time of the mass included within our chamber. So we can say that if we focus on a given time, we have that the change of the mass that we have in the chamber in time will be given by the difference between the incoming and the outgoing mass per unit time. And this mass, if we consider an ideal gas, we can use the relation PV equal to MRT. And so this M will be PV over RT. And based on this expression, we can uh, make a logarithmic differentiation. We are used with this, the MC over MC is equal to the P over P plus PV over V. And this is because we are considering that the, the it's like to say that C star is constant, it's a given property of our provenance. We consider that also the molar mass here and the uh, temperature are given, are uh, constant, do not change in time because the, this is a result of the combustion independent of pressure, if this is true, of course. It's an approximation. So at this point, uh, we can uh, also write this in terms of time derivatives. And we have that d mc dt is equal to mc over pc dpc dt plus mc over vc, dvc, dt. So we can now use this one and this one to solve for, uh, to see how pressure will change in time, because we have here dpc, dt.
we solve for DPCDT and we have that MC over PC D PC DT is equal to Uh, we have this uh, is equal to this one minus this other one. And so it's dot mb minus dot mt from here. And uh, now I have also to subtract mc or bc, bc, dt. So as we have already seen, the bc will be equal to a r dt uh, we can also replace here dot mv and dot mt already written then write it again and also we can consider that mc is the, the density by the volume in this way so uh, considering this we have that mc over pc DPCDT is equal to dot MB rho P AB RB minus PCAT over C star, this is dot MT, and finally, this is M over V, which is rho, and DPCDT is equal to uh, AB RB. So this is again, the difference is that we have now this variation of pressure in time on the left hand side, but if this is zero, we go back to the expression that we have got for steady state, where we have neglected this term here because of rho C uh, much less then rho p. So we do it again. We neglect this term. And this is again what we have written before in case of dp, dt is equal to zero, but it's generalized for the case. We admit a possible change of pressure in time. So m over p can be also written as P over RT. So this is V over RT, VPC, VT is equal to. Now uh, we have that dot and B is rho a a p c n or also you can write it in this way to highlight the difference of pressure with respect to the equilibrium value. So the equilibrium value is the one that corresponds to steady state operation. And here that means it's the value corresponding to dp dt equal to zero, the one we have evaluated by the, the formula we have used as seen before. And similarly, we can write for that mt. So, and this is equal to the equilibrium value of the burning rate by this pressure ratio. And we call it also, let's say P prime to power N. This P prime is this non-dimensional pressure.
And similarly, we can do for dot mt. And this is PC AT or C star. And so again, we can write this shortly. It will be uh, proportional to this P prime. So we have that also here, dot mt p prime. And we can also recognize that these two mass flow rates are the same. You can write this as, as dot m equal to dot mb equilibrium dot m t equilibrium are the same because, of course, uh, the equilibrium condition, the mass flow rate are by what you have said the same from here. Mm -hmm. So we can write we can see here that we have if this is the same dot m and we keep the left the right hand side non-dimensional will be also left hand side non-dimensional. And we see that, in fact, we have here dot mb and then bc over rt. And, of course, we have also pressure and time as the dimensional quantities. So I can, if I consider bc, rt, p, and t, There will be also the dot M that was here. Uh, to multiply this quantity. So. <clears throat> and uh, so you see here that in fact. This is. PV over RT, and we have a mass over a mass flow rate, which is the unit of uh, a time. So we can define this reference time as uh, this MC equilibrium divided by our mass flow rate. And so we have in this case, define this in this way, we can cancel this term and finally have this dp prime over dt prime equal to p prime and minus p prime. That is easy to be uh, analyzed. So let's assume that for some reason we have, we start from an equilibrium condition and we have an increase of pressure. So let's assume that P prime, increase of pressure means that this is greater than one. So PC higher than the equilibrium condition. So we start from an equilibrium condition and we consider perturbation such that we have an increase of pressure. So what happens is that we have two possible cases if the P prime dt is greater than zero, it means that we have a further increase of P prime. So this is unstable. If we have the dp prime over dt is less than zero, we have that two an increase of pressure corresponds to the system respond with 
a decrease of pressure. So we go back to the stable condition, to the equilibrium condition. So let's see when we have the DCP prime dt is greater than zero. So to be greater than zero, he should be P prime uh, to power n greater than P prime or P prime to n minus one greater than one. Or we can see with the logarithm that this happens if n minus one logarithm of P prime should be greater than zero. making logarithm on both sides, this is, which is an increasing function, so we can be uh, sure that inequality can be analyzed this way, and you have that, uh, make this logarithm will be n minus one logarithm of the prime, greater than zero. So this is always a positive quantity, and so the condition for being unstable is that n minus one should be greater than zero, or it means n greater than one. So if the combustion index is greater than one, we have unstable behavior. On the op opposite side, if we have n less than one, we have the, that this right hand side is negative, and so we are going towards a stable condition. And of course, we can make the analysis also considering uh, the possible decrease of pressure and and this of course uh, will lead to the same result to conclude and then we'll uh, discuss further this this plot also at the beginning on the next class i would like just to introduce it What we have uh, is that we can plot here the burning mass flow rate and the uh, trot mass flow rate non-dimensionalized with respect to equilibrium one. And so if we consider the dependency of dot MT with respect to uh, PC, we have an increasing function, linear function because we have linear dependence, of course, and then we can have different dependencies of that MB, which are related to PC to power N. And so you can see easily that if N is greater than one, we have something like this, like a parabola. And on the other hand, if you have uh, n less than one, we have something like this. Of course, all curves pass for this point, which is one, one, equilibrium condition. And you can discuss here the stability condition because you say that, you see that for increasing pressure in case of the, the n greater than one here and n less than one here. This is dot mb, dot mb. So what we see is that if, for instance, we are here, for some reason we increase pressure, we intersect the, the let's say the curve here at this point, that correspond to a condition such that the, uh, the uh, mass flow rate generated by the gas would be higher than the mass flow rate, which is uh, extracted by the 
So we have an increase of mass flow rate that will move us towards a further increase of pressure because we are constraining more mass flow rate in the, uh, it's not a good, a good plot. This is the reason why I'm not able to talk about this. So if we move from this equilibrium position, this is n greater than one and this is dot m t, we see that we have here at the higher pressure, we have this difference of mass flow rates that tell us that we are uh, increasing the mass within the chamber volume and so we are increasing pressure. And so we move to a further point that would be at a higher pressure and you have a higher difference and so on. And on the other hand, if you consider this other behavior, if you increase pressure and you are here, you see that the mass that is uh, pulled out from the chamber is greater than the mass that we are adding for this pressure. And so we have that because of the increase of pressure, we are reducing the amount of mass within the chamber. It is something that will go towards decreasing the pressure in the chamber. So this also explains graphically what we have said and we have seen analytically that the stable condition should be for n less than one. Because here in this case, of course, we reduce pressure and we go back to the equilibrium condition. So I stop here and we'll see for the next practice class on Friday. Arrivederci. 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 Buonasera.